Hi, welcome to China Focus. I'm Karen Chang, filling in for Shelley Zhang. Now, this week there was a brief moment of excitement when everybody thought this year would be the year the Chinese regime ends its notorious labor camp system. That's because on Monday, State on CCTV published an announcement on its Weibo account that this would be the case. They were citing Meng Jianzhu, the head of the Political and Legislative Affairs Committee, the Chinese regime security apparatus. But soon that optimism turned into doubt because CCTV's announcement was pulled and State One Xinhua News Agency came out to say that the system would only be reformed. Now, is reform really what the labor camp system needs? To talk about this with me today is Heng He. Now, to start off with, there's a big difference between reform ending the system and um, abolishing it altogether. Why was there such a big turnaround with what the state run media was saying? Uh, actually, when uh, um, People's Daily Weibo, uh, 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 when CCTV Weibo announced the news, it used the word stop using, not mm. really end or abolishing. Mm. Uh, and uh, after the announcement, people get excited. So. Uh, many people use abolish instead of stop using. So I think the, uh, the, the top leadership haven't decided how to announce it. And once people have too high expectation, they don't want people to think this will be the mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. So they just uh, uh, retreat back like one step, become reform. Uh, that way, uh, the, the people, the regime has uh, more space to turn around. More room to move, basically. Yeah. So um, going back in history a little bit, let's talk about the labor camp system. Now, it was first started in 1950s, but the system back then is very different to what they have right now. Uh, in 1957, actually, uh, it's the state council uh, regulation. Mm -hmm. It's not re really law, but uh, approved by the uh, National Congress. So you can consider it's a law. But actually, the current situation um, follow the rule is uh, the Ministry of Public Security report to the State Council and the State Council issued as the you know, State Council regulation too, mm -hmm. but uh, it didn't approve by anybody, not National Congress. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, still not a law. Um, at that time in 1950s, it's uh, against those uh, um, you know, political opponent. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, for a long time, it's uh, against uh, like uh, uh, rightists and then, uh, you know, different people. But, uh, you know, in the past uh, 10 or 20 years, it used against the uh, different uh, religious belief system like uh, Falun Gong practitioners and uh, also the, the petitioners and the other, you know, uh, people has different opinion with uh, the, the Chinese regime. Uh, because this is a very handy tool. You don't need any legal process to put people away for four years. Mm, mm, mm. So yeah. actually, I wanted to bring up another thing. So you mm. mentioned right now it doesn't go through the legal process. Now, back in the 1950s when it was first set up, it was actually not called uh, Lao Jiao. Currently, it was called Lao Gai. And that was actually like a prison sentence. And, it's, um, and people actually had to go through the legal procedure to be put there. But now people still kind of refer to the current system as Lao Gai, so, but it's incorrect? No, no, no. In 1957, when the state council established the system, mm -hmm. it's also called uh, Lao Jiao. It's a uh, re-education through labor. This term has never changed. But uh, there's another system uh, called Lao Gai. Lao Gai actually is a jail sentence. At that time, there's no jail. So people sentenced, then they put them in the uh, you know, farm, area. yeah, uh, like a far away uh, remote area to do the uh, farm work. So sometimes they call law guy. Actually, it's uh, equal to jail sentence. And this uh, law guy uh, hasn't been used for 30 years. So actually now it's uh, two systems. One is re-education re through labor, and we call the labor camp. Mm -hmm. And another one is a jail sentence. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, recently in China, there have been a lot of uproar against the labor camp system. There were a couple of high profile cases. One was against um, this woman called Tang Hui who was trying to appeal the light sentence she saw of men who um, kidnapped and raped her daughter. Yeah. There was another case of Ren Jian Yu who basically was sent to labor camp because of he, uh, he posted a few things on, on Weibo. Now, a lot of people that were and unhappy about the system are saying that it's because it doesn't go through the label, uh, legal system. Is the labor camp system kind of reflection of 
how rule of law exists or doesn't exist in China? Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons they try to change the image of this system. Mm. Uh, that's why, you know, made the new uh, announcement. Because uh, this reflects the real nature of Chinese legal system. This is just an extreme case. But the whole legal system for the past, uh, you know, 13 years has been totally destroyed, you know, from the, uh, the uh, prosecutor uh, to the court uh, sentence mm. and uh, to the, you know, um, established the case by the police and uh, until this, uh, you know, court defense by the lawyers. Mm. So everything was totally destroyed. Uh, this is just uh, one example mm. uh, in the forced labor system, mm. just one example. Mm. So, and also overseas, there were attention on the labor camp system because of this letter a US woman discovered inside a box of Halloween decorations. And now the person who wrote the letter claimed to be from the Ma Sanjia labor camp in Liaoning province. And it kind of talked about the condition of slave labor that goes on in Chinese labor camps. Is slave labor or forced labor a big component of the labor camp system? Yeah, every legal, uh, the labor camp has uh, the system to force people to make the product mostly um, export and uh, some of them uh, still inside China, the mm -hmm. product. Actually, uh, they estimated like uh, uh, several um, billion Chinese yuan, mm -hmm. um, you know, this uh, uh, size of the economy mm -hmm. produced by the Chinese labor camps. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, at least uh, um, one tenth or two tenths of the products was exported to other countries, including the United States. Actually, mm. main country mm. export uh, the labor, forced labor product is the United States. So this is a big business in China. So the cause for reforming the labor camp system, basically it's not new and it's been going on for a little while. So you were saying the labor camp system kind of has this big part in, to play in the Chinese economy. Is that part of the reason why the system hasn't been able to be changed or reform? Uh, this is one of the reasons because uh, so many people benefit from e economy, you know, financially benefit from the system. But the major reason cannot be changed uh, because uh, it's a party's tool, it's a handy tool to prosecute the political dissidents and, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the people with uh, the conscience mm. uh, or different belief, like Falun Gong practitioners. And uh, in 19... Uh, uh, actually, in 2005, the People's Congress tried to uh, replace this uh, forced labor system with another system, but, uh, you know, didn't uh, get um, support from the Ministry of Public Security. Mm -hmm. It's very strange, you know, the legisla legislative mm -hmm. body will listen to, uh, uh, you know, the police. It's kind of the wrong way around, it's, right? Uh, it's, yeah. it's totally the wrong way around, but that's... Uh, uh, what happened in China. Mm -hmm. uh, the legal system will listen to, you know, uh, the People's Congress will listen to the party. Uh, as we can see this time, uh, abandon or stop using or reform this uh, uh, re-education through labor system was not announced by the National People's Congress, mm -hmm. but by the party. Mm, by the people, uh, political and legislative affairs committee. Yeah, it's a part of the party. What would be the consequence, do you think, if they did um, majorly overhaul the system? Like if they yeah. made cha big changes to the system, what, what would be the consequences that would really um, stop the Chinese regime from changing it? Uh, I think the, the major reason is, uh, um, you know, especially the people with uh, different belief system, uh, uh, like uh, Falun Gong practitioners or the house church mm. members, and they didn't commit any, uh, commit any crime. So you cannot go through the legal system mm. to persecute such a large population mm. people. Mm. So the easy way is use the actual legal system like a uh, uh, labor camp. Mm. And then you can put like uh, 10,000 people you know, away mm. without a trial, without legal process. Mm. So these calls, the most recent report about the labor camp system rehaul, basically comes only a couple of months after Xi Jinping has taken over as the new party chief. Do you think that's significant that at this particular time that um, you know, a major announcement about uh, changing the judiciary system of the Chinese regime has come about? Um, yeah, I, I think the relevant issue is two cases you mentioned, the uh, high-profile case, mm -hmm. and this year's 
uh, Masanja's, uh, mm. you know, forced labor product, uh, you know, with the letter inside, and that damage Xi Jinping's image and his new leadership's image. They try to establish a new face in the world and to Chinese people. So this is an easy way because they considered a long time. They have a replacement, and uh, you know they consider actually the Ministry of Public Security uh, made a plan for two years to reform this system. Mm. Uh, actually, so they want to announce it first, and uh, I think that the, this is more like uh, to change their image. A bad image instead of really do something to change the system. I see, like yeah. kind of pouring water over the fire that started. Yeah. So you say that they are, have been thinking about making the changes. A lot of the observers in foreign media that I've read is that there's a concern that even though they want to change the system or they say they're going to, they may just replace it with something else entirely. Now, so what do you think are the specific things that need to be done for there to be really, for there to really be change um, to the labor camp system? I think the easiest way is release all the prisoners of conscience. Uh, like but, if, I, but, yeah. but if they do that, don't they have to have like a um, series of steps to redress those people? Is it as simple as, simple as just releasing them? No, you have to, you have to first, uh, those people, you didn't actually try them, mm. so you don't need to redress them. Huh. You just release them and then you make the national um, composition to them. You know, because you lock them oh, up and mm -hmm. torture them, you, you compensation. And then during the process, you know, mm. lots of people committed crime. So you need to put those people in legal process so you mean to the try people them. in charge of the labor camp system. Charge the labor camp and, uh, you know, whoever put them away, mm. you didn't follow the law. Mm. So you need to do this first instead of, uh, you know, make a promise to, to reform the system. But, uh, you know, currently just according to Chinese constitution and the China laws, you have many things you can do. You know, there's many things, there are many things you can do. So I guess it's really just a matter of what the new leadership is willing to do and are actually capable of doing yeah. in the coming time. Well, we're yes. actually out of time today and thank you very mm -hmm. much for discussing this with us. For more on this and other related topics in China, visit our website at ntd.tv. Thanks for watching.